This video was made possible by Woodchip Woodworking. Hello YouTube, uh, Woodchip here. First off, I'd like to start off by saying I'm sorry for not being able to put out more videos recently. I will certainly try to get at least a couple more done this winter break. Hopefully, hopefully we'll try to get them finished, get the series finished up. Move on to exciting things, you know, like bull turning and pen turning and all sorts of fun stuff on the lathe. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about the chuck. Um, the chuck is essentially a clamp that fits onto the headstock of the lathe and allows you to turn bowls and goblets and chalices and all sorts of very cool and unique items that, you, that can be done on the lathe. Uh, this video is going to be broken up into three parts. Uh, safety segment, an assembly segment, and then how to prep your wood and mount it on the lathe. Um, there's going to be a sequel to this video. The next one is going to be focusing on how to do basic turning using a chuck and what is going to be involved, the differences between spindle turning and chuck turning. So, stay tuned. So, Let's start off with safety, because as you all know, safety in the shop is of utmost importance at all times. Like everything, you want to make sure that you're always wearing um, shop glasses or a face shield. In fact, I just picked up a new face shield at Woodcraft, so hopefully we'll be doing some rough turning videos at some point. Um, specific to the chuck, like a drill press, you always have a chuck key. You never want to, make, you never want to have this chuck key in the chuck when you turn the lathe on. This will go flying across your shop, it could hit another person or another tool and cause damage, injury, or potentially even death if you have a large enough lathe. Always make sure that your chuck key is out of the chuck before you turn the lathe on. Same principle goes with the drill press. Also with the chuck, you have these jaws on here that will mount to your chuck. Now, when collapsed in and tight, they're not necessarily such of a problem but when you expand them out to encompass larger objects you will have these essentially metal edges sticking out I don't know. there you go you'll essentially have these metal edges sticking out and I mean this is spinning at thousands of RPMs when you're doing fine work you don't want your hand anywhere near the vicinity of these sharp metal edges spinning at thousands of RPMs because they can tear potentially tear a finger off and that's never a good thing um, also, with the lathe, when doing spindle work and other smaller turning, um, I kind of use the wheel on the end of a headstock as sort of a flywheel and a brake, even at times. You can't do that with a chuck, because if you clamp down on that, um, that wheel on the end of your headstock, but, with, but using a chuck, what it's going to do is it's going to cause the, the chuck to spin off of the threads. I'll explain this all later in depth during the assembly portion, but because of the momentum of the chuck, it's so much heavier than doing regular spindle turning, and the wood you're using is greater and bigger in size than what you're going to be doing in spindle turning, that it is far more dangerous. So you always want to make sure that you let the machine coast to a stop. Maybe, maybe use your hand as sort of a, a friction break, but never just clamp it and try to stop it all at once. Only light touches at most. So now that I've sufficiently scared you with this tool, I should say that if used correctly, it is a, an excellent tool. You just have to make sure, to, as always, keep aware of the safety precautions. So let's move on and talk about um, assembling all of the different parts that come with the chuck. So normally at, at basic, when you buy a chuck, you're going to have the chuck body, which is essentially um, four or three sliding um, sleds, almost, I call them, uh, connected to a gear on the inside. Um, a chuck key, as always, is going to fit into the side of the chuck and allow you to move these um, pins or sleds or whatever you want to call them back and forth. Okay. Um, you might also have a thread adapter. So this will just screw to the inside and allow you to adapt between different threaded um, 
lathe headstocks. And of course you will have your jaws. Now your chuck jaws are rather simple. I mean they're just pieces of metal with a little rimmed inside and a rough grippy surface. Um, and these will just screw onto your chuck sled. Your chuck will come with um, different sizes of jaws. For example, these are the normal sizes, but you also have the very small and very large diameter um, jaws to encompass projects of all different sizes. One thing you'll notice is on these jaws, um, in addition to being rough on the inside, you also have rough on the outside. And this allows you to, instead of clamping an object, for example, grab a piece of wood, clamping an object in like this, you will also be able to, if you have a hollowed out center, you'll also be able to put your jaws on the inside, put your hollowed out center over them, and then expand the jaws outwards to clamp your object in. Um, so putting your jaws on your chuck is a fairly simple process. The only thing you want to make sure of is most chucks will have this little um, milled in like socket or um, channel right here. What that corresponds to is normally the number four um, jaw. Your number four jaw will have the little, or a, a jaw, will have a little pin. If I can get the camera to focus there. And that little pin is going to slide right in your number four. You want to make sure that you don't get your, you don't want to put your uh, jaw with the pin onto a, um, onto a sled that doesn't have the channel dug in because this pin, once tightened down, will just mar and mark into your chuck and will ruin the face. Other than that, you just take you know, a normal jaw, find the corresponding number, so this is number one, so I'll find number one. Over here, take your hex key, which should come with your chuck. If not, you can just find a corresponding hex key. Screw it in clockwise. Wanna make sure that it's tight. When you break these apart, you wanna hear a snap. Like that. Okay, that tells you how tight to do it. You should just hear snap. Okay. So you want to tighten it fairly tight. I mean, you don't want these flying apart on you when you are turning. You will notice that I am missing a screw here. I dropped it and it has disappeared somewhere on the shop floor. You should find that. Um, you will also sometimes see people do things like this. All right? Or they will just have one screw in, and then they'll have this other side just hanging out. This is very sketchy. It can be done, but it's very sketchy. Oh, and of course, this would be the same as this. You wouldn't have, you'd have uh, one hole not filled, and the, this front hole um, in the back, of course. But um, you can do it. I would not recommend it. I would instead, just when you're um, cutting your tenon, I would suggest just cut your tenon small enough that it will fit in the chuck the way it's designed to be done. It's designed that way for a reason. As you can see, this is not stable in any way. So I would caution you against doing this. All right, let me just put all these jaws on, make sure they're tight, and we will move on to prepping your wood. All right, so I'm over here on the lathe, and now there's, there's two ways to mount um, something on the chuck. 
you can either start with a square or ideally square or possibly rectangular object um, and you don't have to do any previous turning or if you start with a round object what you're going to do is you're going to cut um, uh, pretty much a tenon but you're just going to be slanted inwards so what you have to consider when you're doing this is the depth of your chuck jaws so when you're cutting your tenon you have to consider the depth between this uppermost edge and the base okay? because what you don't want to do is you don't want your wood to bottom out which is essentially you don't want your tenon to go all the way from the top all the way down to the base because this surface of your wood the surface that you're going to be mounting your chuck jaws on is not flat okay? so if you bottom out your wood you're going to have this not flat reference edge against the flat reference edge of the chuck and therefore when you put your wood on your chuck take away your tail stock it's going to be all kittywampus and off center what you want to do instead is find a distance from here to right about there so you, uh, that's about as far as you want it in because you want it as far as you can to get the most grip the most friction to keep it from pulling itself off but you also don't want to waste wood and you don't want it to bottom out so those are the two things you have to consider so I'm just gonna make my tenon right about there I'm gonna power on make sure your lathe speed is turned all the way down as always safety glasses as always main power on make sure nothing hits turn that on mark my line now take a spindle gouge and all we're gonna do is just rough this out nice and easy and we're gonna take our diamond parting tool and start on the outermost edge and just go right on in If you notice, I'm doing this in steps. So I'm only doing about half the blade of the diamond parting tool. I'm not doing, I'm not taking a full blade. I don't know why, probably because of the reduced friction of the wood, but it cuts significantly faster if you do it this way versus just trying to do a full blade at a time. Let's keep on going. Oh, and also if you notice, I'm just going, at this point, I'm just going straight in. I'm not trying to, to do an angle. That's finishing. For now we just go straight in and drop it down to the size you want. I have a fairly flat tenon here. Let's talk about the size that you want this tenon to be. You want to make sure that when you have your chuck, the ideal size to have your tenon is to have it be the size of the chuck jaws, fully expanded, but minus a little. So we have a chuck jaws, fully expanded, we're just going to minus it about that much. That's the ideal. It doesn't have to be that way, though. Okay? What you don't want to do is have it the size of the chuck jaws almost completely closed, plus a little. Because you want as much tenon as you can get between those two. Okay? So you don't want something that big. 
that's that's too small. You need to change um, jaws to do that. So this ten size looks about right for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it into your slanted tenon. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our tool, right? Push it instead of going in. I'm going to take it and turn it. So this way it's cutting at an angle. That's what you want to try to do. Also, something I just like to do is, whenever you're cutting with a diamond parting tool, your um, edge of your wood here tends to become convex. So I just like to go in here. make that as flat. Okay, so that's method A. From here you just dismount your piece. You're going to use your knockout rod. Take out your spur. So, take out your spur. Grab your chuck. Hold your chuck in one hand. Spin the tail, or sorry, spin the headstock with the other hand. All the way until you feel a solid connection and twist it just a little bit. From here, grab your chuck key, put it in, open your chuck jaws to the approximate size of your tendon. It fits in, squeeze them down. Now, generally this doesn't matter, okay? This doesn't matter because you want this tighten down as tight as you can. Don't be, you're going to mar the wood, but you're going to be cutting it off anyways, so you want this as tight as you can get it. So go on both sides, same thing as, same as a drill press, essentially. Tie all, tighten all the holes, make sure it's nice and tight, and there you go. That is mounted. You can cut this piece of wood now. So the other way that you can uh, affix something to a chuck is if it is square or rectangular wood. The way that works is if I have a piece of square wood. So like I said, the first way you can uh, mount a piece of wood to the chuck is to cut your tenon. But the other way you can do it is if you have just a piece of square wood. You can simply put your wood in Take your chuck key, tighten this down. I push it bottomed out and tighten it in because it's already square. You already have to true it up. So why not get that extra bit of wood in? Make sure it's nice and tight. And you can turn it like this. I would suggest when you're first starting out to always use the tenon method. This way can cause a lot of vibration and chatter, and you should have some experience on the chuck before you try to do this. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. As always, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. I love to read your comments. Um, if you have any questions, especially safety concerns, don't try this unless you are you know, confident. If you're hesitant, please let me know. I will happily address any concerns you have. Um, hopefully I can get this video out today, get all the editing done. Uh, if that happens, then I should be able to post another one tomorrow. The next couple topics I'm thinking about focusing on are um, turning with a faceplate instead of a chuck, and also doing uh, pen turning. Pen turning is a very fun, easy way to kill an hour or so on the lathe and it's just exciting to do. That's it. Thanks for watching.